two of them circulating now, they will have seen this kitchen pushing back. So as I said before, there will now be number 8, 24, 92 and 1. So it's 7, Ken Lane, 2, Neville Penfold, 8, Gary Moon, 24, Rob Wilson, 92, Richard Bigot, number 1, Steve Smith. That, of course, is the last race of the day, race 32. We're at the moment with race 30, though, the consolation final for the sidecars. Six laps of the Cumbridge circuit, and it's Tim Bennett that gets to the front as we go into that first bend. Problem forming, Cave, goes off the circuit, and he did. first bend uh, done so brilliantly well to get to the front of the field and I think it's going to take a lot to catch with Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. They really have looked to be in very, very good form this year. to make it work well. Be disappointed that he's not in that A final, but it certainly has been very tough to qualify for that big final. Steve Jewison and Dave Ward is comfortably now in second place in front of Tim Bennett. John Hawley trying to close the gap. Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams looking to make this race completely theirs. Steve Jewison not being able to form the minutes Tim Bennett losing ground all the time on Steve Jewison. The gap really has been in the middle. The crew of Gary Jackson will be very disappointed that he's not out in that A final. He really is a very, very quick driver. feelings about their season this year. They've not really come to the board and uh, Steve Jurson and Dave Ward finish in second, and it is John Halsey, third in the Ace of Aces last week. He's now come through, my apologies, second of course last week. He's now finished third in the Montbar Burnout Consolation Final. Let's give you the official result for race 30. A win for outfit number 23, that's Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. In second place, number four, Steve Jewison and Dave Ward. In third place, number 13, John Halsley and Tony Miles. Fourth place, number 12, Tim Bennett. Fifth place, number five. And in the winning time, which we can compare to that big international burn-up final at the end of the day, 2.24.35, so remember that's the time for the six laps, 2.24.35, 23, 4, 13, 12 and 5. Well Jim, if that really is the last time we'll see Steve Jewison and Dave Ward in action, I think we really should uh, pay tribute to their really long and successful careers, the pair of them. Dave Ward, of course, starting off with Ted Tucker and winning a Masters Championship there and coming together with Steve Dewison and being uh, unbeatable for a period and then being unlucky 
with injuries and uh, perhaps not this year showing us the form that we know they're truly capable of, but we do wish them well. Here we go then, the solo B final, they break, head down the back straight, we look across to the far side and pick uh, up as it comes together. Rob Fortune led momentarily, but he's back in second place. Peter Reid in third, but out in front is the Englishman who lives in Holland. It's Bob Dolman who leads. Rob Fortune in second place. Peter Reid. through Samar Malenko right there as well but out in front is Bob Dolman seems to be uh, extending his lead slightly now over Rob Fortune in second place let me do it Went for the lead again in the same spot, didn't get it, and Bob Dolman hangs on in there, so it's Bob Dolman still from Rob Fortune on Peter Reid, and look at Samuel Malenko. Samuel Malenko making up the ground on Peter Reid in the third place. Fortune looks for the lead, goes by, can he go on to this side? It's Fortune on the inside, Dolman on the outside, but a good race between these two, and if Rob Fortune has the inside line, is he going? So we've seen him uh, have success again. And in eighth place, number 28, Paul Hurry. Well, as they come out in points order, selecting their position on the start line. Highest point scorer getting the first selection, so presumably uh, gone from the best. Gerhard up the inside. Seventh place. So then, Schofield goes up after after the World Long Track Champion. We've got a race on our hands here. Six laps from there for this one. Oh, my God. 
we uh, get so used to seeing with these sidecar races, the speed they're travelling then, just one small little problem goes wrong and it's all sorts of problems with the speed that they're travelling. The clerk of the course having no hesitation. Well, as the ambulance disappears off the circuit, both Richard Bigot and uh, Martin Bailey deciding they're going to watch this final from the inside of the circuit. You can see they've been joined by Alan and John Blewett out there as well. But I'm sure there was some very quick work done on Neville Penfold's outfit. Uh, I'm sure I wasn't the only one that noticed, although he had all those problems with Paul falling off the back of the bike on that first starting straight, it was popping and banging like it really shouldn't. So uh, I'm sure there was some very rapid work done while we had those few minutes break before the rerun. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards will of course be hoping that uh, they can make an equally good start. I'll again remind you that Neville Penfold has got that inside gate. Ken Lane has decided to take what is effectively grid two. Rob Wilson just uh, a little bit further out. I think he's slotted in between grid three and four. Steve Smith, grid five. And right on the outside, Gary Moon and Jason Glenny. And well, that's how they line up. And as we get underway for the second time in the Bernard final, it's Ken Lane once again that's made a very good start. Steve Smith has gone with him this time, and a much better start for Gary Moon this time. He's right on the outside of Steve Smith going right on the outside. Looking perhaps for Neville Penfold to have a better ride this time. Rob Wilson is holding fourth, Neville Penfold in fifth. But as we look to the front, it is our Masters champions, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, the lead from Steve Smith and Keith Hall in second. Gary Moon. Opening the gaps up already. Around that bottom bend for the second time as we see them come by us. That's quite some gap that he's got on second place, Steve Smith. Gary Moon again desperately trying to get the tear off off the run of his visor. He's obviously picking up all the dirt from Steve Smith. Around that bottom there, no ways I'm sure. Are on, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Going brilliantly well at the moment as they come past us. That outfit absolutely flying. And Keith Wall, no answer to Ken Lane at the moment. He's had so many times this year, he picked up the whopper only a few weeks ago. Had a disappointment at the Aces with the engine not starting for him as he came to the line for the final. Oh, Gary Moon as he bat lost ground on Steve Smith. and then Ken Lane had to work for it. Well, as the uh, sidecar drivers come round to receive your congratulations, the official result in a very few moments as they come by us a great season for Ken Lane and Mark Edwards 
They want you to finish it with a win in one of the big finals. I mean, of course, the Ace of Aces or the on fire burner. Both of them now internationals. And indeed, the first international won by Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Steve Smith and Keith Wall, a great afternoon's racing from them. A brilliant ride to finish in second place to Ken Lane. And if I look back through the results from 1984, this is the first that Ken Lane has won at the Tuckridge circuit. He won the Battle of Britain, I remember, some three years ago, so he has won here at the circuit. But this is the first burn-up that he's won. He now goes into the record books, along with Steve Smith, Roger Misa, and Steve Jewison. Very few that have won the bonfire burn the official result then of race 32, a win for Elphick, number 7, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. In second place, number 1, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Third place, number 8, Gary Moon and Jason Glennie. Fourth place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. And fifth place, number 2, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. The winning time, 224.58, 224.58. 7, 1, 8, 24, and 2. Come on, Gary. Up on the top. Up into the corner, and then we can call you forward from there. And we'd like Bob Dolman over as well, because we have a presentation to make. Now, here comes Bob. So we want Kevin Williams and Gary Jackson across. <coughs> I've forgotten how many trophies and garlands we hand out on this occasion. It's uh, quite a lot. <coughs> well, here's Bob coming over. All the way from Holland. We've got to give him something to take back, haven't we? As well as money. It'd be a good idea, lads, if you come up and we'll call you forward. It's, it's easier then if Ken and Mark could come up. <laughs> and I know Steve and Keith were here because they were very early across. And just in the middle of this, anybody lost a door key? Lost property time, we've got a door key. It's up here if anybody uh, has lost one. Here's Bob. <laughs> oh, it's uh, Gary. Jason Glennie coming up. We need Steve Smith and Keith Waller. Come up, fellas. It's easier if we have you up and then call you forward for your well-deserved applause. Oh, I think we're nearly there. Here's Gary. We really are very close now. Right. Up in the corner of the van there are the sort of gaggle of high class uh, sportsmen, the like of which you won't see many places. Probably just as well, really. Right, let's make a start then, ladies and gentlemen, with the garlands for the B final winners. And uh, winner of the B final for the solos, Bob Dolman! Come on, Bob! <laughs> How about that, then? <laughs> well done, Bob. Congratulations. Well, isn't that nice? Bob, who raced so often in this part of the world, coming across from Holland, where he now lives, to win the B final. Jim, sidecar B final.
Well, thanks Tony, it doesn't look much like a Dutchman to me, but <laughs> we won't go into that. We move on to the sidecars, of course, and I've been keeping up to date with all the sidecars, and I was expecting, perhaps, to see these people in the A final. It was such a hard final to get into, as Roger has already said, there's been some tremendous hard riding this afternoon. Winning the consolation final takes a lot of doing as well. They did it in great form. It was, of course, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. Well, here I want to remind you, of course, they did have a tremendous season this year, finishing third in the Masters, and of course, as I say, not really something that we should talk about too often, the consolation final winners, but really that was a very, very hard final to win. Well, it looks as if we're going to stay with the sidecars team. We've got Roger being very active up here at the moment, and we're going to have a lot of garlands to give out a lot of awards. And as always with the sidecar competitions, or indeed with any competition, we'll start, of course, with third place, and getting third place in the first international bonfire burn-up. A very hard feat to achieve, and this year, finishing in third, it's Australians Gary Moon and Jason Benny. taken first before I dive in and have a quick word with these boys because there's an awful lot of news around this guy at the moment. Oh, one of... <laughs> so, you make out that he's not used to having photographs taken, wouldn't he? But there we are. I'll go have a quick word with you, Gary, because I know that you're off to Australia very shortly, I understand. Yeah, we go back on Wednesday, so um, we'll be here on our bridges in the sun. <laughs> no, don't go on about the sunshine, Gary. We want to know what you thought of British grass track races. Oh, it's, it's really hard and tough out there, but we're giving it our best, and hopefully next year we've got a better bike now, better equipment, so maybe next year. Well, that's answered a lot of questions, I think. That means you're definitely coming back to us next year. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely coming back, thanks to Real Time Consultants who sponsor me and fly me over and keep me going and keep the bikes going, which costs a lot of money, as you can all imagine, so thanks Real Time Consultants. Well, indeed, that goes without saying that we all thank the fact that you've been over here riding in British Grass Track. I think that it's actually educated some of our drivers as well. And I've got to quickly ask you, I apologise that I'm taking a bit long on this one, but it is important. Some of our English boys are coming over to Australia to give you some competition, aren't they? Yeah, they're coming over, so we'll get them on our own turf and maybe they might learn a little bit more. <laughs> well, we certainly hope so. But Jason, I will have a quick word with you because you stepped into the breach, it seems, only a little while ago. It was something like this, probably your fourth ride. Yeah, I mean, me and Gary, we've only been going for about a month now. He's been, like, completely different outfits to ride with, but we're soon getting, we're getting together now, but it's hard work, but we're going to get there. We've got a full season next year to go through, so we'll have it a better year, you stay here next year. Well, let's hope so, Jason. As you move over to the far side, of course, it means that we do move on to second place. Third place finishes there, of course, Gary Moon and Jason Glennie, but as we move on to second place, now this was a name I wasn't really expecting to see in the winners' roster this afternoon, I can say that politely, I'm going to see them playing football in a few weeks' time as well. They've put a lot into the sport, they've been developing engines and frame this year, it's nice to see that that has all paid off, because finishing second in the International Ground Up Sidecar Competition, it was Steve Smith and Keith Moore! to put the garland on wrong, we can always rely on him to do something like that, but Keith, I've got to say that not once, and I'm sure I lost count in the end, of how many times you raised your fist and presented it in front of him. Is that something that he gets used to? 
I don't know, I don't think he can sue me, he's got his eyes closed most of the time. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to let out secrets like that. <laughs> I always try to say there's a passenger doing this steering, but that was hard work out there this afternoon. Yeah. Lovely, yes, we've been caught once. I'm not going to bother anymore. I'm going to move over to Steve because I know that Steve, you put a lot of work into this outfit this year. Do you think all that hard work has at long last paid off? It would have done had we been able to beat Ken. But um, I'm pleased with Ken because uh, winning this meeting after winning the championship it was like me a couple of years ago when you know I won the championship and then came here and won the the burn up as well and uh, it's a tremendous meeting to win and uh, I'm sure Ken will now finish the season uh, absolutely elated. Having said that, uh, he did lean on me. Right, oh, Christ, did he lean on me? <laughs> well, I'm not going to pursue that one at all. I might just ask that question of Ken, but see, that's what racing's all about. It's hard, it's furious. The track must have been hard for you guys this afternoon. Yeah, uh, I actually found it um, superb to ride. I mean, somebody's trouble ways. Uh, prepared track wonderfully well. Um, there were some ruts appearing on the corners, but they, they worked extremely hard to keep the track as, as smooth as it always is. And uh, you know, congratulations to the Tunbridge Club once again. It was a wonderful meeting. Well, I certainly share those thoughts, Steve. And indeed, we've only got one more crew to come up here. So I can say once again, in second place for the burn up, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Well, there is only one more crew to come up. Of course, they are the winners of the international burnout. We've already talked about them a little bit, talking to the other drivers. You can see the sort of respect that they've gained from their fellow compatriots. Of course, we call them up here, the winners of the very first international bonfire burnout in the sidecar competition. Our winners this afternoon, they are, of course, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. in a minute. We want all the silverware, all the uh, champagne. And it's sometimes you wonder when you see these photographs in uh, all the papers, etc., how they always seem to come out so well. It's because Alan does take his care and attention to get everything right. I'm sure you can bear with us just for a couple of minutes. We want the photographs right. Oh, one more of the two together. I think they spent long enough together this afternoon, haven't they? Mark, I want to come to you first of all. We'll have a quick word with him in a few moments. I know you enjoy doing this sort of thing, Mark, but I've got to ask that it got a bit tight out there in the final. Was it as tight as it looked to us? Yeah, it was quite tight, actually, yeah. He was just getting tired. I kept screaming and shouting. I saw him kind of inside. And I'm pointing to Ken, and that's sort of like where we ended up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to pursue that matter at all, but you must have enjoyed today's racing. You've won the Masters, and this is just, as Steve has quite rightly said, the icing on the cake. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a good feeling. It's nice. Just finish the year off like this. Well, a brilliant partnership, and of course, I know, Mark, you do encourage this driver an awful lot. I've got to have a quick word with him, because, Ken, all eyes are on you at the moment. You are, of course, our Masters champion. Did you really expect after disaster last week to actually come here and win this first international? Oh, I came here with full intentions of trying to win it. Um, but last week, I think I was the first one in the pub after what happened. And uh, yeah, I was totally disappointed last week, but um, I, did, I was determined today that I was getting awfully tired in that final. And uh, I, like Steve said, I had to do a bit of serious leaning on him, but that's the only way I could survive, I think. Well, I think I would say that's racing, and I'm going to stick to that, but six laps, do you think it is just a little bit too hard going? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I can assure you, Ken, you only did six, honestly. Restart, Jim. Oh, sorry, yeah, he's got his fun, hasn't he? Because, of course, we have those ones before. <laughs> Oh, well, you can embarrass me as well, I don't mind. But, Ken, I've got to ask you that we've all been talking these last few moments about this being the icing on the cake. Is that how you see it? Oh, yes. Um, um, it's the money for the party, yeah, that's true. But, yeah, this is, I've, I've enjoyed my season, and it's all, it's all down to Mark, really, because this enthusiasm just doubled over. And, uh, 
the physiotonomic case. Um, I'm going to keep going next year because I've got to defend it. So I've missed him out here. I've missed him and uh, yeah, I, I, I need him back so we can carry on. I'll retire when he does. Well there you are, you've heard it down here at Tunbridge. He's going to retire when Roger does. So I think we've got at least another three or four years racing in both of you. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> now I'm being increased on that. We get five or ten down here. What do you think? Have <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least ten they're saying, Ken. Well, there's all these nippers wanting to go, like Neville and all that, they're getting fed up with it all. So, <laughs> but they're a bit young anyway, yeah, aren't they? Well, they are, but they're learning from the experience that you guys are giving them. Oh, is that what you're <laughs> Right, I think we'll uh, leave it at that because I can move away and give you one tour. All the winners in the sidecar competition, I won't just say the one, two, and three. Of course, the winners are Ken Lane and Mark Edwards, but your congratulations to all three crews. Before we move on to the final stage of the presentation, Bob Dolman asked me to thank Don Gordon, who lent him his engine today, and Roger Maynard, who let him have the frame, I think. So uh, thanks to Don and to Roger for uh, enabling uh, Bob to have a super day. Ladies and gentlemen, the solo competition, equally hard fault. In third place, a young man who's been threatening to end up at the top of a major competition all year. He had a hell of a good ride today, made the trip from Cornwall very much worthwhile. Going on! <laughs> well, he gave us a smile, he said. Looks a bit miserable about it already. <laughs> Gary, few words. You must be absolutely delighted. Yeah, I'm very delighted with the final. Uh, I've been trying at these meetings before and already get in there like coming forth and things like that. But this is the best result so far and I think I could get to like it as well. Get to like winning? Yeah, but there's still two more places to go yet. Third's okay, but the top mark is the one to get. Well, congratulations Gary. Good to see you getting that consistency into your results as you have done all year. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Third place in the bonfire bird act. Last week we were delighted to see a guy who we saw ride last year come back to see us and came back with a world championship. Delighted to see him again today. He finished in second place, part of a terrific battle to win, Marcel Gerhard. <laughs> Marcel, that was quite a race. Well, for me it's a good race, it's a hard race. I think in uh, England it's a big difference from the grass track to the Germany. I think it's more hard here. Well, we, we like to think we've got a few good riders. <laughs> we're very pleased. We're very pleased to see you. We hope we'll see you next year. You're going to come over and race with us? I hope, yes. Yeah. I like the race here. Good. Congratulations, Marcel. Thank you for coming to race with us. We look forward to seeing you next year. Marcel Gerhard! Well, at the end of a major competition, there can only be one winner. And this surely is one of the most popular winners we could possibly have. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to say any more. Steve Schofield! <laughs> Roger, we're working very, very well here. We'll get the photographs and then we'll get Steve to say a few words. Steve, that was quite a race for those of us out there watching. I bet mean, it was pretty uh, exciting in there as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite a tough race. Um, I knew, like, Marcel gets in front with a fight he's got so quick. Uh, I'd be very, very hard to score against. I really tried hard to get to that first turn, but he just out pulled me. And uh, I thought the best thing I'd do is just follow him and only make the mistake. Luckily enough, it worked out okay. What about six laps? Was that particularly tiring? I think I was pretty fortunate being behind myself because I wasn't thinking about getting tired and he was probably thinking about standing in front and hitting every bump and if you're racing somebody you're not thinking when you're behind. Uh, I think I was pretty fortunate there. So six laps, six good entertainment for the crowd and I think it's, uh, it's alright when you win but when you lose it's too many isn't it? <laughs> 
It was certainly a, a tremendous race. What about the, the rest of your year now? What are your plans? Um, not well, season's finished today. Uh, and then I'm staying home. Girlfriend's expecting a still baby at Christmas. So I should uh, put it in the cup when it comes up. So, uh, yeah, I'm having a pretty quiet winter. Super. Steve, thank you for providing such great entertainment for us. Continued success to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Bonfire Burnout International 1992. Well, one may have uh, taken these pictures. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thank God. The thought of driving uh, 150 miles in some very wet clothes doesn't quite appeal, but never mind. What we'll do in a minute, we'll get them all up front and you can give them one last cheer. But, uh, well, hey, here they go. <coughs> right, fellas, if you can just sort of come out to the front, let's have one last round of applause for our top competitors at the 1992 Bonfire Burnout.